to California. So it is mid-April 2021, and we have some Scotty news from Elon Musk. How do you plan a business where you know, the rocket business, you know some of these things are going to blow up on the launch pad? How, did, how does the business plan work? I don't really have a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> SpaceX Starlink saying is that this year, later this year, we are going to be having Starlink communications for satellites to RVs, mobile RVs. Is this not exciting or what? Well, not so soon. Let's take a look at some of the details and see what this is all about. Stay tuned. Well, whether you're at home, at work, or maybe out in RV land, uh, communications is always an issue, internet communications. And today, most of us, well, if we're not at home, maybe with cable or fiber optics, if we're lucky. Um, if we're out on the road, we're probably using cellular service. And so today we're going to take a look at uh, a lot of the misunderstood information on satellite communications, most specifically on Starlink communications. So if you're a curious RV traveler, interested, maybe ready to buy, or maybe already own a Starlink satellite terminal, but have some questions about all the conflicting things you've heard or read. Okay, today let's go ahead and jump right into a Q&A before I even get started on Starlink show series. Or if you have the time and are really interested, I recommend studying well-written posts in the Reddit forum on Starlink, reading FCC reports and articles from reputable, knowledgeable news sources, reading or watching information coming from Elon Musk and all of his tweets, as well as statements by his engineers. Phew. So, first question, what is the price for Starlink service? Answer, well, for today in April of 2021, for fixed terminal, the subsidized price, not the cost, of the customer satellite terminal is $499. And for the current beta phase with only one service level so far, monthly service is priced at $99, US prices. Well, why all the fuss about mobile Starlink terminal services? Answer. First, the Starlink microwave transmitter and associated antenna array must play nice with other communications carriers already licensed by the FCC for service, as well as upcoming entrants like Amazon and others interested to sell low Earth orbit Internet satellite services in the future. Second, since the satellite terminal actually consists of an array of around, I don't know, 1,300, 1,400 antennas, I've encountered them recently, which can electronically point anywhere within a 100 degree radius of the sky. Now it starts at 25 degrees above the horizon. Uh, well, that's almost 75% of the total sky. And the associated software is designed to have actually a moving pencil point focus beam width to communicate with fast moving satellites, even though the antenna itself, when it's not with a focus beam, is 100 degrees wide, up, down, left, right. So obviously, Starlink's mobile terminal will require additional human safety factor considerations, as well as software to avoid conflicts with other carriers. Now, if I purchase a fixed satellite dish terminal right now, can I use it when I go RVing? No, not today is the answer. First, the current satellite constellation MECH, which is about a thousand satellites, does not completely provide satellite coverage in the US. There are holes in the spots where the satellites are traversing the United States and the rest of the world. So that means in the southern states where the satellites don't have as much time and space, you're not going to get as good a cell service. You will have dropouts or maybe permanent outages for several minutes. Secondly, during this preliminary beta phase, the software associated with the current network configuration does not accommodate users who randomly move their terminal antennas outside of about a 20 mile area. Okay, so we'll grab the dish and a power box and uh, head down the coast and uh, test the old Starlink at a few locations, see how far it will work to. So we'll continue on a little further down the road. Okay, now we're down at Shoreline Park. So I gave it a good 15 minutes and no luck. The debug screen on the app says uh, not connected. Now the customer's satellite terminals need to be instructed by the orbiting satellites where to focus from one fast moving satellite to the next. And I do mean fast moving. Until the satellite constellation network can provide full coverage with both the user's terminals and the associated ground station. Yeah, 
you got a gateway ground station. So once you get a signal to and from the satellite, it has to go to a gateway ground earth station, which is then connected to the internet. If you can't get there, all bets are off. If many of the customers started clustering in one area, that would of course overload the network and the beta service. Remember, this is a beta service so far. And today, some customers experiences momentary dropouts, maybe for a couple seconds, maybe for a minute or more, for a variety of reasons, including when the satellites cannot provide seven by 24 by 60 minutes an hour by 60 seconds in a minute, total coverage for every second. The bridge confirmed prior to deployment. Oh, but there we heard the call out and we can see it on the screen. We've got deployment of this batch of Starlink satellites. But be patient. Today, there are a few hundred wandering satellites like the one you see behind me, uh, about 500 pounds each that are wandering to their home location, eager to join the 1000 already in their final orbit and in position and providing service. Okay, so third, as of April 4th, 2021, you can use your Starlink application to go online and request a semi-permanent move to a different location. So I get many parts to this answer first, Service may not be available at that location. Right. Might be a spot down, oh, south of the 37 degrees. Um, I'm in San Francisco. I'm kind of right on the cusp. And they tell me, well, maybe third quarter of this year you might get service, Michael, but not right now. Um, second, the requested location is already at capacity. Yeah. You know, they're giving more uh, facilities, more terminals, more bandwidth to the people that live up north, up towards the northern states and Canada for sure, where the satellites I'll talk about later where they spend a little bit more time and therefore it's easier to get a signal and keep a signal. So, number three, you may find trees that block the satellite signal unless you stay in a wide open space. And that could even be as little as a leaf. I'll talk later about just how small the signal is. That is, what is the wavelength versus the size of a puny little leaf or a limb. Okay, so number four, the request after it is completed if your home area is near capacity, when you get back and you want to go back to your home base, guess what? You may be denied. Somebody else has got it. They've been waiting. Or maybe they want to travel and think your place is a nice place for RVers to travel. So um, that could be a problem, couldn't it? So then when will Starlink provide service for mobile RVers? Well, if the ever optimistic Elon Musk has his way, mobile services will be available later this year. Of course, the devil is in the details. Certainly the satellites should be able to place for the first 1400 birds to be good to go and a permanent beta service for everybody above 37 degrees north latitude of the United States. Right now it's performing great for the initial 10,000 customers. That's right, I have 10,000 customers enjoying the service today using their fixed location services. And by the way, Elon has clearly stated that Starlink capacity, even when it grows to 4,000 satellites, and ultimately when it grows to 40,000 satellites, will not begin to provide enough capacity for urban metro internet service needs. So no, it's not for everybody. I know some of the gamers and people who are stockbrokers that do nanosecond almost trades, they would like to have it fast, maybe, but for the masses, no, we won't have it. So while some have small number of customers in the Los Angeles area, beta testing, remember, uh, not gonna be able to do most of the customers in these metro areas because the bandwidth per cell cells may be about 20 miles wide, 20 miles up and down, depending upon the angle of which satellite is hitting that area. It's just simply not high enough to serve millions of customers in one area. So I want to be clear, and this is from Elon now, I want to be clear, it is not like Starlink is a huge threat to local telcos, telephone companies. I want to be super clear, it is not. In fact, it will be helpful to telcos because Starlink will serve the hardest to serve customers at telcos otherwise have trouble doing with landlines or even cell radio stations, cell towers, end quote. So practically speaking, one Starlink satellite overhead could theoretically support as many as 4,000 user streams for videos, etc. cetera. Um, now, another not so little dependency is the issue of the FCC authorization to permit mobile customers to transmit signals while on the road. Hmm. Oh, okay. So not only communicating at a space when they get there, but how about when you're on the road? 
Well, thanks for coming by today, and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, you know the drill. Be sure to like, subscribe, and look forward to your comments. Also, if you have any feedback, we'll go ahead and have about another 10 minutes on part two, where we're talking about probably what a lot of you are looking for on mobile RV communication. And in part three, we'll talk about the satellite. Gosh, can we have all this talk and we've not really talked that much about the satellite part of the communication systems? So I think that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the show and I look forward to seeing you again real soon in the next couple days. Peace out. Bye for now. Have you been to California? Seen the sights and people there? Last day off towards the sky and count down the ignition Into the universe I fly, I'm going on a mission I am just a robot sent to do another lunar spacewalk A lunar spacewalk Everything was go, but then I ran into a problem One of my systems crashed, there was a flash, the light was awesome And then I went off course, started shaking and I started to roll Started to roll. That's an actual feed. It's, it's so surreal and moving to see something that ordinary floating in space. I literally watched it for hours. Whoever bullied Elon Musk in high school, thank you. <laughs> thank you.